Right, today we're going to graph square root functions. So you're going to learn how to graph a square root function, and we're going to do it by transformations. So here's our parent function, y equals the square root of x. If we go ahead and sub in our x values, we're going to get the square root of negative 1, which is not a real number. Okay. If we put in 0, we're going to get 0. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 2 is 1 point something. The square root of 3 is 1 point something. And the square root of 4 is 2. So for the purpose of graphing, the 0, 0 is good. Okay. The 4, 2 is good. Okay. And if we wanted to, we could go out to 9 because the square root of 9 is 3. Which would be here, and of course we have the 1, 1. So our graph would look something like this. Notice that it's really half of a quadratic turned on its side. All right. So that's our parent function. All of our other graphs are going to be transformed off from that. So if I have this A out here, it's going to flip it over the X axis if it's negative. And we also multiply whatever A is to our Y values when we're graphing. If we're going to flip over the Y axis, we're going to multiply if we get for the B. We're going to flip that over the Y axis. And we're going to multiply 1 over b to our x values. Now we're going to factor that out first. And you'll see an example of that. The h translates horizontal right or left. And the k translates vertical up or down, just like the vertex form of a quadratic. So let's go ahead and graph this. So if my parent function starts at 0, 0, I'm going to go right to and I'm going to go up three. And that's where it's going to start our graph. Okay. And then the point one, one, we'd go over one and up one here because we've got up right two and up three. The graph four, four, or I'm sorry, four, two, we would go over 2 and up 3 again. Okay. You could also look at this from the standpoint of this would be kind of your vertex. And if it's quadratic, we're going to go up 1 and over 1, up 2 and over 4. Now our domain and range in this case are restricted. Our domain is going to go from, in this case, 2 to positive infinity. And we're going to use these markings for our domain and range. Okay, our range or our y values is never going to go below 3, so it goes from 3 to positive infinity. And in this case, there are no x or y intercepts. Sometimes you'll have them, sometimes you won't with a square root function. All right. Now, notice that this negative 2 is out in front. This is the same as saying negative the square root of x plus 3 minus 2. Okay. One of the things we can do is we can look at our domain and range just using the equation. Okay, Our domain is always going to be off from the 3. Okay, So it's going to start at 3, and it's going to go to because we've got this negative, it's going to be shaped like this. Okay, so it's going to go from negative 3 to positive infinity. Our domain is always off the k, or our range is always off the k, so it's going to go from 2, and since it's shaped down, to negative infinity. So let's take a look at that graph. We're going to go 3 to the left, because remember, inside grouping symbols, we go the opposite direction. And since we're opening down, 
we're going to go down two and then down one and over one down two over four down three over five and here is my graph okay again we don't have an x-intercept and our y-intercept is going to be where our x value is zero so negative two minus the square root of three okay here my h is one my k is three so i'm going to go to one three but because of this two here instead of going over one and up one i'm going to go up two and over one because we're going to multiply all of our y values by that two and then i'm going to go up instead of up <clears throat> two and over four i'm going to go up four which is that two times two and over four so it's going to look like this and it's going to be twice as high now in this case we've got a bunch of stuff happening we're going to first factor what's inside the square root so we're going to get 2 times the quantity x plus 2 minus 2 okay okay so my h in this case is still going to be this so my h is going to be negative 2 and my k is going to be negative 2 so I'm going to go down there to two, negative 2, negative 2. The 2 in front is what we multiply all of our x by's, but it's by the reciprocal. So it's going to be by 1 half. So it's what this is going to do is it's going to shrink our square root function horizontally. So I'm going to go, instead of up 1, I'm going to go up a half and over 1. When I go up 2, instead of going over 4, I'm going to go over 2. If normally I would go up 3 and over 9, it's going to be to 4 and a half. So it's going to just make it a little closer in, a little, it's going to get steeper quicker. All right, so hopefully today you learned how to graph a square root functions by using all of the transformations, the same ones that we used when we graphed quadratics.